Well, I'm a happy little boy today because our long and painful spousal sponsorship process is finally coming to a close. I can't even remember the last time I had to wait for something this long and intense. I believe I was in school like 25 years ago. I was a kid and I had a very, uh, you know, to put it nicely, hypersensitive bladder. So even just a drop of water I drink and immediately I'd get a message from below that, uh oh, let's go. And while that was, there's no crime against this, but there was a lot of bullies in my school, monsters. And whenever I try to use the restroom, they would lock the door from the outside and then, you know, call me names and do all sorts of nasty things. So this kept happening over and over again. And then one day I just decided I'm never going to use the restroom of my school anymore. That's going to show those bullies. Believe me, they found one million other ways to bully me, but they, would, they were not able to bully me with the bathroom process anymore. So while that worked in my favor, I would still get the urge to relieve myself, but I would have to hold it in all day. I would just wait for the school bell to ring so that I could run home as soon as I can and, you know, reach my toilet, lock the door from the inside and ah, joy and relief. I may have lost track of what I was going to say. But what I'm trying to say is I am experiencing joy and relief today <laughs> because my wife has received passport request. Anyway, so in this video, we'll cover my current spousal sponsorship timeline so far, the passport request that we received, the documents that you need to submit next, and what to expect from the COPR timeline. So let's begin. All right, so let's first look at the timeline of our sponsorship process so far. So what you see on the screen here is the new permanent residence tracker, which you can use to track the status of your family class application. Currently, it's only working for spouse and dependents. But if you don't know what this tracker is, you should probably check out this video that should be showing up on the cards here, link below. I explain everything about what this tracker is, how you can use it to link your existing application and then track every update on the status of your application. A quick tip about this tracker, once you've received your AOR, you may not be able to link your application right away. It takes some time for your application to get connected to the system and a lot of people have experienced this. A couple of my subscribers reached out to me and told me about this. So once you've received your AOR, wait at least four to five days and then try to link it. Obviously, both the sponsor and principal applicant can link their applications, but you will definitely see more details when you link using the principal applicant's UCI. Again, so I explained all that in that video that I just pointed out. So definitely check that out, okay? All right, so now I have signed in into this tracker using my wife's credentials. So my wife's UCI and password, meaning the principal applicant's credentials. And if I scroll down all the way, there is a summary of document status. Basically, it gives you details about your medicals expiry and your COPR expiry date. And this COPR expiry date section was a recent addition to my application. It's only going to show up a week or so before you're about to receive your passport request, all right? So you may not actually have this, but I recently got that. So let, let's actually open this up and go into more detail. So if I click on view record, it lists the immigration medical exam details. So basically my wife completed her medical test on February 7th and her medicals were updated on February 16th. And that's why after that, in this section under document status, this started to show up. So there is an expiry date, which is one year after her medicals were updated and the document number is assigned to it. But if I scroll down, this was a recent addition to my wife's application timeline. This did not exist before, but on April 5th, she got assigned a COPR number and that's why it showed up here. So there's a document number assigned here and it has an expiry date, which is about eight years from now. And then there is a travel document number and issuing country. So this COPR details started to show up on my wife's tracker on April 5th. And a week after that, on April 7th, So these COPR details showed up on my wife's tracker on April 5th and about a week after that on April 12th, she actually received the passport request. So I think that's the way probably it's going to go for a lot of people. You will first see the COPR details and document number in your tracker and then you will receive the passport requests after that. And that's why it's good to keep track of the document status section in your tracker. All right. So this is a good sign. This means that you can probably expect your passport request soon. All right, so now let's look at the timeline so far. So if I click on activities and if I go all the way 
here i submitted my complete application october 26 2021 now i'm not going to talk about the application that i submitted on august 15 2021 which was rejected it doesn't really count in the timeline although it counts in your wait timeline and your stress. I've already shared details about that timeline in other videos. I've linked those videos in the description below, so check them out. All right, so we submitted our complete application on October 26, 2021. Then on January 23rd, 2022, my wife received the instructions for biometrics. On January 24th, 2022, she also received instructions for medicals. And on the same day, I, the sponsor, also received the acknowledgement of receipt, okay, the AOR. Then on January 25th, the medical exam activity status were updated to in progress because she had not really done her medicals yet. On January 28, 2022, my wife's eligibility status was completed, meaning she was determined to be eligible or admissible as a permanent resident to Canada. Then the background verification activity was updated to completed on January 28. So basically my wife submitted her biometrics on 27 January 2022 and within a day her background verification was completed. All right, so it was very quick. Then she received her invitation to pre-arrival services the same day when the background check was completed on January 28, 2022. Then my wife submitted her medicals on February 7th, 2022, and it took about a week for those medicals to be completed. So basically she passed the medicals. And after February 16th, it took about two months to receive the passport request. So two months is not a hard set timeline. It could take longer, it could take less, but for us, it took two months. So keep that timeline in mind. You should expect to receive your passport request in around two to three months after your medicals are updated to complete. Okay, so now let's look at the actual passport request email that we received. All right, so what you see on the screen is, all right, so what you see on the screen is the actual passport request email. As you can see it, ready. Mm -hmm. All right, so what you see on the screen, okay, so what you see on the screen here is the actual passport request email. As you can see the sub, as you can see, all right, so as you can see, all right, so as you can see on the screen, what as it, as it. All right, so as you can see on the screen, this is the actual passport request email. It says in the subject line, ready for visa. All right, this is what it's going to look like. So our primary office, as you see, is listed as CPC Ottawa. The date we received is April 12, 2022. Then this is the principal applicant's UCI, meaning my wife's UCI. Remember, I received this in my email because, you know, I'm the representative of my wife and I chose to do business on behalf of my wife with IRCC. And also I had provided my email address when I was filling out my wife's application. That's why the sponsor, me, is going to receive this email. Okay, my wife did not receive this email. And this is the application number starting from F. And then if you scroll down, it has instructions on how to submit your passport. So keep in mind that once you receive this email, you have 30 days to finish the instructions and the next steps. All right, so this is a time sensitive issue. And if by any reason you are not able to fulfill that, then you should definitely inform the office via this web form, which is given right here. All right, so, Step one is change in circumstances. So obviously, if there's any change, you have to inform them via a web form. We are not going to cover that right now. Step two is passport requirements. So you have to determine first whether you need an ETA or a visa to travel to Canada. And that will determine whether you have to submit your actual passport or a photocopy. So if you need an ETA, then you will just have to submit the photo page of your passport. But if you need a visa to travel to Canada, then you'll have to actually submit your passport. And I know for all applicants from India, you will actually have to submit your passport. And right now we are talking about applicants who are outside of Canada. So outland applicants, all right? If you're already in Canada, your instructions are slightly different and we'll take a look at them in a second. But this is just for applicants who are outside Canada and need a visa. So I know it's true for India and it will be true for most countries. Then you will have to submit your actual physical passport, all right? And also pay attention to these instructions in bold here. So let's say you're outside of Canada and you have a Canadian temporary residence visa or permit but you have not traveled to Canada yet, you will still have to submit your passport if you've received this passport request, all right? This is for outland applicants, all right? So keep these instructions in mind. For most of you, you will have to submit your passport. All right, so next step is preparing your documents. So obviously you'll have to collect a list of documents, put them in an envelope and then send it to the destination, okay, for stamping. So let's look at the set of documents that are mentioned in this letter. So number one is copy of this letter. So basically you will have to print this letter out. So what you can do is if you're using Gmail, you can simply go up and use this printer button 
and it's going to give you an option to save as PDF or if it's connected to a printer, you can actually print this out. So print this out, but also save it as a PDF because you will have to upload this document, this letter down the line and we'll get to that section. So just click on save as PDF and save it to wherever you want to save it. But also make sure you print this physical document out because you will have to send it to the destination. So number two is actual passport or photocopy based on the ETA or visa requirements we just saw earlier. So most of you will have to send in your actual passport. Then two photos of yourself and any accompanying family members. Instructions for photos are very clearly laid out here. By this time, I'm sure you're already aware of these instructions. Make sure to take these instructions to the photography studio and these instructions should be very religiously followed. Otherwise, they are just going to reject that request, all right? So get two passport size photos and on the back of one photo, as it says at the bottom of this email, you will write your name, which means the principal applicant's name and date of birth and the date, name and address of the photography studio. But these are the two actual physical photos which you have to put in the envelope and send to the destination, all right? Number four is the right to permanent residence fee. So I'm guessing most of you would have already paid it by now. If not, then definitely do that. Number five, so just take a sheet of paper, write the height and eye color of the principal applicant and all accompanying dependents and just put that in the envelope also, right? All right, so now let's look at how to submit your package. So before we get into that, pay attention to this part B here. It says if you're currently in Canada, you are not required to submit your passport and will be landed virtually, all right? But you will have to inform them via a web form within five days of receiving this letter, all right? So let's say you are already in Canada. Let's say you visited on a temporary visa or a work permit and now you've applied for spousal sponsorship, then you will have to inform them about where you're currently living and if you have any dependents where they are living using this web form and your UCI within five days of receiving this letter. Okay, you don't have to send them your passport. You only have to send them the passport for visa stamping if you're outside Canada and have not traveled in Canada yet, all right? So that's why this part A is going to apply to most outland applicants. So in this video, we are only going to be covering submitting your package while overseas, meaning outside of Canada. So my wife, the principal applicant is right now outside of Canada. She's never traveled to Canada. So she needs a stamp on her passport, a visa basically to be able to travel to Canada. So she will have to submit her passport. Now this has to be done through VFS Global and they've already given the link here. And you guys might be familiar with VFS Global by now if you've already enrolled in your biometrics or medicals, all right? So I'm just gonna click this link. This is where you are going to select your country and then you will get instructions specific to your country. Let's just look at the instructions for India and you should be able to apply the same logic to other countries also. So I am going to select India here. All right, and when you get to this page, you are going to click on book your appointment. So book now, then you scroll down, click on online and you will have to click on this link here, click here. And then if you keep scrolling down, in this section, you will have instructions for submission of passport. All right, so I'm going to link this page directly in the description below. So you can just get to this page, but this will mostly apply for Indian applicants. So that's why I showed you the entire process on how to get to this page. So it says from July 19th, 2021, passport submission service via two way courier will commence for all categories. And it says in person submission is strictly prohibited. So you can't do that. Basically what this means is there is a two way courier service right now that is active in India. VFS Global works with Blue Dart. So once you get registered, they actually send a guy to pick up the package from your address, which you list when you register. They take the package, they get it stamped, and then they deliver it back to the address that you list in the delivery address. So basically you don't have to do anything. You just have to register. Somebody's going to come pick up, take it and deliver it back. All right, that's the two way courier service. So let's do that next. So you're gonna click on this web form. And then if you click on this arrow, you will have two options to choose from. So obviously you will choose two way courier service. Then select your category. You are going to select passport submission for permanent residence application. For those who have done the temporary residence visa must already be familiar with this process. So select this because it's family class. Then did you enroll biometrics for this application? So my wife had enrolled biometrics before, which are now done. So she's going to select yes. Then it asks location at which biometrics was enrolled. So she enrolled her biometrics in New Delhi. So I'm just going to select New Delhi. Then number of applicants for submission, so just one because only my wife is going to be coming here. This is where you're simply going to write the pin code to determine if that area is serviceable by that courier service. So I'm just going to write a pin code here. And if I click on check if this is possible, it opens up the address boxes, which means yeah, it's serviceable. So this is where you will list your complete address. 
basically this is the address where you want your passport to be picked up from all right so wherever you are living currently so that you can actually be there when the guy comes to pick up list that address here then you are going to provide more details so first name last name the application number which you can simply find from the passport request email that you receive from IRCC then your email id and your contact number so make sure you write the correct contact number your india contact number because they are going to call you to verify your address and the time and place that is good for you to pick up all right so make sure you list the number correctly here then your date of birth and premium lounge if you've opted for it then select yes otherwise no then would you want paid sms service so i would say choose the paid sms service because it's your passport you are going to be tracking it's a very important document so you would want very timely updates all right so i would say select yes then there is also a section where you have to upload the passport submission letter given by IRCC. So basically the passport request letter that you saw here, this entire email, which you saved as PDF, you are simply going to be uploading it right here. So click on upload and simply upload that passport request letter here. Then when you click on continue, you are simply going to get a breakdown of all your charges. I think it's about 1700, 1800 rupees. So pay that using your credit or debit card and then you were pretty much done. Soon after, you are going to receive an email from VFS, which is going to look something like this. So this is the email which my wife received from VFS, and obviously she received it because we listed her address when registering, all right? So this has an airway bill number, basically a tracking number which you can use to track the status of her pickup and delivery. So go to the Blue Dart website, and when you put in this tracking number, you should be able to track the status. Then there are instructions on what you have to submit, and to whom you have to address this envelope when you submit, and there's two documents attached below in this email. And these two forms you have to fill out. So let's look at these forms next. So click on this. It's a consent form. And if you've already done your biometrics or medical, you probably already are aware of this form. So simply scroll down and fill this first section out. So name, address, telephone number, email address, sign it here. So basically print out and sign, or if you can digitally sign, that's fine too. Write the date, where did you sign it? And where were you living when you signed it? I don't think these two sections are going to apply to a lot of applicants. So just fill out this first section. And if the other sections apply, fill them out too and print them out. All right. Then the other form is also a very important form. This is the return address form. So this is the address that the courier service is going to use to send in to deliver your package with the passport that is stamped and your confirmation of PR document. So make sure you list the address where you want your passport delivered. All right. And make sure everything is accurate. So list the applicant's first name, last name, email ID and complete address landmark as accurately and correctly as possible pin code and then opt in for SMS service. So your contact number, sign this form and date it and also print this out, okay? And then also add these two documents in your envelope. So right now, because of COVID restrictions, this is the only way it is working in India. You have to sign up for this courier service, all right? And this is of April 17th, 2022, when I'm making the video and this may change down the line. That's why it's important to keep track of this link and this website and these instructions. They may change down the line and the option to actually send in your package by yourself may also open up, okay? So keep track of the updates, but at this point you will have to sign up for the two-way courier service. Okay, so let's finalize the documents in your envelope. Passport, two photos, passport submission letter you received from IRCC, consent form from VFS, return address form from VFS, height and eye color details in a sheet of paper of you and all your accompanying dependents. All right. So once you've collected these documents and put them in an envelope, make sure to address that envelope to the officer VFS Global Canada, as it says here in the instructions in the email that you will receive from VFS. All right. So once you have prepared your packet, then you just have to wait. It takes about three to five business days. Someone from Blue Dart is going to contact you and coordinate a time and place for pickup. And then once they pick that package up, then it can take about a month for them to deliver that package back again. And then once you get the package back, you can verify that the passport will have an immigrant stamp and you will get your official COPR document. So now you're all set to travel to Canada. All right, so that's been our journey so far. Thank you so much for your support along the way. Lots more to come, so stay tuned. And the next time you see me, my wife is probably going to be here in Canada. So if you'll excuse me now, I have to go pack my bags because I'm leaving for India for vacation. But before that, I have to go relieve myself because you know, remember tiny bladder. I'll see you in the next one.